steps that we need to do, like we need to do this, 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 and this, and then just create a task for each one of those. Yeah, that's awesome. Like I said, my recommendation is task, especially for um, the fact that you guys don't get to see each other every day, right? I mean, I'm used to working with teams where the people spend about eight hours a day with, with each other, you know, five days a week, and that's a whole different situation than what you guys have. So I would have you break the task down even smaller, so you can see those you know, things moving across the board from doing to do, do it to done. So I hand back here. Yeah, um, taking into consideration how long the task would take to get done. Yeah, I think it's important. So we talked a little bit about estimating and estimating stuff, you know, figuring out how long it's going to take. It's something that is really hard for people to do. Uh, our brains don't work that way. In fact, there was a Nobel Prize winning paper that basically went in and improved how the way most companies do estimation of these big projects, like, doesn't work. Our brains can't do it. But it turns out when you break things down to like four hours or less, our brains are able to actually wrap themselves around that kind of time. And so by breaking the task down, you can figure out how long they're going to take. And when you know how long they're going to take, you can actually plan and say, oh yeah, well we should be able to get this many done this week. Right? So I actually highly recommend throwing a little, you know, how long do I think this is going to take on every one of your tasks. Yeah, this should take 20 minutes, this is 45 minutes, this is an hour, this is 15 minutes. I'd put that on all your tasks. You can break them down. What do you think they're going to take? And you can plan. All right, what else? Any other ideas that people came up with? Yeah? Like, think about what that person will be capable of doing. Like, um, if the task is like two, 
with this really broad and then then deficits is going to be overwhelmed. Yes. So it's better if you just break it down step by step. Yeah. And then be like, okay, will like this be better for you? And if it's too much still, then to just say, okay, like will someone help this person? Yeah. Yeah, helping each other out. That's why we have a team, right? We're a team. So I'd like to talk, and we're not going to have time to really get into team stuff today because that's a whole like talk for a couple, a couple hours on its own. But let's talk about it just really quick. So when I see people working together, they're not all teams, right? There's some that I call teams, and there's some that I call work groups. What do you suppose the difference between a team and a work group is? Yeah. Everyone in a work group is just going solo, not talking to each other. Just... Yeah. Yeah, when I see people work together and it's like everyone comes in and they're like, all right, I'm going to take this and I go put my headphones on and I don't talk to anyone else, that's a work group. Any other ideas? Of work? What's a team then? What's the, yeah? Team, you're helping each other reach your goals. Yeah, you're helping each other reach the goals. The team has common goals they need to get to. And the team needs to get to those goals together, whatever it takes. Um, the, the phrase I like to use is we over me, right? We is, in, is more important than me when it comes to, the, to being on a team, right? So who's on like a team? Give me some examples of the teams you're on. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, like in school or? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm Joe Choir. Choir, yeah. So you can't all be just doing your own thing. Right? I'm show choir. You have to work together. You have to. Uh, I think it was Liz who had a really cool um, example the other day of like an activity. Like if you think of sports like running a marathon versus being on like a rowing team. So when you're running a marathon, it's not one person, right? It's a whole bunch of people doing it. Are they a team? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they're all running for themselves, trying to get their own like personal record, their own personal best. What's the difference if you're rowing? Yeah. You're all working together to get to the end because there's a bunch of different variables that you need to each person needs to watch before we get to the end. Yeah. Now if you're on a run, yeah, go ahead. And like when you're running, if you slow down, you're not gonna hinder anyone else. It's more like people will do better, but if you're running, you mess up. Everyone messes up. Yeah. yeah Alright. I think you should go to a cross country meet, right? Because like teams, they all run in like the same little pack, right? Mm -hmm. Because they push each other to be better. Yep, and, and that's, that's very how, true. That's how it works in like cross country. Yeah, they cross country is one of those weird because people are still out to get their best time, but they're helping each other, right? It's like I'm gonna pay, we're gonna pace each other. So that's kind of a that would be to me like the in between between you're not a work group, but you're not necessarily what I consider like a team. team. So like rowing, if one person isn't in step or isn't in sync with the other ones, it messes up, like, everybody loses. Like, the entire thing is messed up. Yeah? I think a really good example of this would be, like, color guard or a marching band. Because, like, if, let's say, the drum one is in, like, the same way or something like that, but, like, the other part would be just like that. The rest of the people would be like, they're going to stop. Then there's just a camera part between those social people or a group of all the people on the show. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So when you're on your teams, when I'm working with teams, the mindset is we have this work to get done, and we have to get it done as a team. There's no individual success or failure on a team. When you're working on one of my teams. In fact, when I'm talking about my teams to other people, the team is the smallest unit of person that I acknowledge. So if we're talking about, hey, we have these goals, it's the team met the goals or the team did not meet the goals. I never go into like, you know, Jeff didn't meet his goals and, and Mary met hers. I don't care. The team either succeeded together or they didn't. And that's all I care about. So when I'm on a team, when we have these goals, if I'm on a team, it's, we need to have these goals. I need to meet these goals. And that means I personally need to do whatever I need to do to make sure we get those goals met. Even if it's something I don't like doing, that's what the team, if that's what the team needs me to do right now, that's what I'm going to do. What about like an individual person on your group that isn't meeting the goals for a group? Yeah, so that's that's an interesting question, right? So on the teams that I work with, um, I let the team figure that out. 
So we're going to have, and you guys are going to start having these, they're called retrospectives. Have you heard of that word? Yeah. So retrospectives are a time for the team to come together and actually talk about, like, hey, what worked well for us in the last week or two, what didn't? And to me, if someone's not pulling their weight on a team, that should come up in the retrospective. Now we're going to try to do it in a kind way, and we're going to try to, you know, attack the, the problem, not the person. But the team needs to figure out, like, are there consequences for us not meeting our commitments? And what is, what is that? And that's where, fortunately, you've got teachers that are going to help you with that and help you figure that out. But the team should really feel that ownership. Um, you know, if I'm on a team and even if I worked really hard but we didn't hit our goal, I'm still not going to feel great about how that last week or two went because we just didn't meet our goal. And so we, that just means as a team we need to improve some things. And that's okay. And we're going to use the retrospectives to do that. Yeah. Okay, one thing that I struggle with is if that's the case on the group is to how to move forward with um, like someone not going down the way from the work. Should the consequences Yeah, and I can't tell you what the consequences should be, right? So that's where your, your teachers can help you with that. And as a group, you can try to help define that. Um, we're going to actually have you guys as teams create what we call a working agreement. And to me, every team should have a working agreement. What do you suppose that is? Just from the name working agreement. What do you suppose a working agreement is? Yeah. Where you got the situation <coughs> Yeah, it could be coming up with consequences. Yeah. So it's an agreement that everyone everyone agrees that maybe something needs to happen for people need to act this way. Yeah, it's kind of rules for behavior for the team. Actually with the morning group, we actually came and created a working agreement. There's too many people here, but we actually came to a working agreement for the session. And it's usually simple things. It's usually things like, hey, if we have meetings, we're gonna be there and we're gonna be on time. If there's conversations going on, we're just going to have one conversation going on at a time because it's important to respect each other's you know, ideas. Uh, it could be things like, uh, if we make a commitment, we're going to finish that commitment, right? whatever it takes. But I don't know what your working agreements are going to be, and every team's is probably going to be different. But as a team, you should come up with a working agreement. And what I would like to do with my teams is even have them, like we write them out really big, and everyone signs it. Right? Like, we all agree that this is how we're going to work as a team. And then that's where, again, I hate talking consequences right off the bat, because hopefully we can just work as a team. And if we're excited about what we're doing and we put that agreement together, we're just going to follow this working agreement. But if you do have to talk consequences, a working agreement would be where that would be. And it could be something that's like, hey, if we have a task that's not done by the end of the week, then we all have to stay late and work and get it done. Right? Whatever it takes. I don't know what your working agreements will say. You'll figure that out. But every team should have it. Does that make sense? Cool. Yeah. So for your um, uh, for your job, does your team have like a working agreement? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, every team I work with has working agreements, and it's really cool for me to see like what they come up with, because every team is different. Like the people on every team are, are different. The work that they're doing is different. And a lot of times, it's, if they've worked together before, like they know, like, hey, maybe here's some of the problems we've had in the past. Let's put something in the working agreement. Uh, I was working with a group out of a college in Illinois, and they were putting together a working agreement. It was really cool. Like they had stuff in there, like, um, like we will tell it, we'll tell each other hello every morning. We will smile at each other whenever we can, and we'll say goodbye before we leave for the day. It was just cool because it's, it's kind of like that whole don't go to bed angry, right? Like don't be fighting with someone. Like we're gonna we're gonna squash this stuff before we leave for the day, right? We're not gonna leave angry. By the end of the day, we're gonna smile and say goodbye, right? And that was in the working. Agreement. Just really cool stuff like that. So the other thing I like to do with working agreements is to say like maybe one of the things you'll have in there says something like one conversation at a time, and I like to have like a because. Why is that important? What's the value of that? And so because you know, everyone's, you know, everyone's thoughts are important and respect is important. Right? So when you're building your working agreement, I love to put like a because line at the end of your terms. Yeah, every one of my teams working agreement. And I like to, like I said, put them out on big paper and put them right up next to my board. So they're very, they're there all the time. Uh, for a lot of teams, especially newer ones, like when they go into their retrospective, we'll actually read through the working agreement. 
or something like that before we go into the retrospective to remind everyone these are the rules and we all agree to these. Right? And that also makes it easier, like if someone's not following the rules or if someone's behavior isn't great. Has anyone ever struggled, like if someone on your team is not behaving in a great way, like calling them out on it? Anyone ever struggled with that? Yeah, I see a lot of hands. I'm that way. I don't like to call people out. Like I just don't like to. It's uncomfortable. But when you have a working agreement that everyone signed, it's so much easier to just say, hey, remember we have this rule. Like it's not me calling you out of behavior, it's you're breaking one of the rules we all agreed to. I'm just reminding you of that. So it becomes a lot easier to have those conversations. Yeah? Sometimes when you just have an agreement like with yourself, like a personal agreement, yeah. like I volunteer a lot in special education classrooms and they have a list like for themselves to greet someone every day mm -hmm. and just like have like personal tasks in order yeah. to like make themselves better. Yeah, it's interesting, when you put something in a right, when you sign your name to it, it changes your behavior. There's all sorts of psychological studies that show that, right? So just by putting something in writing and signing your name will change your behavior. It's just cool. We're committing to doing that in our head, now I've committed to that. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. Any other things that you guys came up as you were talking in your groups about you know, breaking, you know, getting feedback? I didn't hear a lot about feedback. What can we do about getting feedback? Yeah. Um, we talked about how every time you get a task done or part of a task, maybe share it with your team and talk about like if it's beneficial to all of them and if, if the team would be the best way to do it. Yeah, awesome. Did you guys all hear that? Cool. Any other feedback things? Yeah. I, I agree with that. I think it's more on a smaller on a, on a smaller scale. Like you have a partner, like specifically for big projects is what I'm thinking. We have a partner that we look to, and if we're figuring out this bigger task, this bigger part of our project, then we want to get the feedback from them. Mm -hmm. And if we're doing smaller things that are not quite as big, maybe we go to our teacher that's a part of that project. But if we're looking at like 10, 15 minute tasks, we have a project lead, we have like quality yeah. control. Somebody like the size of the task and the importance of the task determines how much you really need to look at getting feedback from like right. our partner is like the biggest person we can get feedback from or maybe yeah. just another team member. Yeah, I saw that actually this morning. Um, after this morning's session, uh, there was someone here and, and she was writing an email and she came to, I think it was to Liz, I'm not sure, but she came and was like, hey, here's the email, here's what I've got and read it off and got some feedback. And I mean, you know, just changed a couple things, but Really quick feedback, getting, you know, especially for the smaller tasks, getting feedback can be really fast, but it can make a huge amount of difference in the work. Like, oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, don't say that that way, right? Getting some feedback is super helpful. Any other ideas on the feedback? How often do you think you should get, be trying to get feedback? Oh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, so you can after every task. That might even be within the team, right? Where you can just say, hey, Hey guys, I did this. This is what I got. What do you think? Are we good to move on? Is this done? Yeah. 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 And like we use Slack, so maybe asking like maybe twice a week does anyone need help with their tasks? Mm -hmm. Any problems? Yeah, we do a thing. So there's a there's a agile practice called a daily stand up. We were kind of talking about this over lunch. And so the team that I'm on at Duboco, we do a daily stand-up. But the weird thing about us, kind of like you guys, we're not together every day. And so we use Slack. So every morning, and I was showing it to some of them, every morning I go into Slack, and I do hashtag stand-up. I'm like, here's the things that are important for me today. And we usually do what we call three, the three questions. And it's, so here's what I finished since the last stand-up. Here's what I plan on finishing before the next stand-up. And here are the things that are keeping me from getting my work done. Here are the things that I'm having problems with. And my whole team does that, and then we can help each other out. We can see what each other are doing. We can get expectations. We can get some feedback. It's awesome. It's just a great community. We do it every single morning. It's the first thing I do when I get to work is go into Slack and type up my daily. And it takes me two minutes to type that out. Even on my phone, it takes me two minutes. Just put that out there, and then it takes me another couple minutes as my team members put theirs in to see what they're doing. So we've talked about breaking things into small chunks. We've talked about getting feedback. We've talked about a little bit about making work visible. So the reason you guys have the boards in Agile, there's this concept that we want to make everything really visible. We don't want to hide anything. The reason for that is that in order to make something better, you have to be able to measure it. Like you can't improve something you can't measure. Would you agree with that? 
Because otherwise, how do you know if you're getting better or not, right? If you don't have some way to measure it, you can't make it better. And you can't measure something you can't see, right? So we keep everything as visible as possible so that we can constantly be making things better. So we make the work visible. If we're having problems, again, this daily stand-up, when I'm like, hey, I'm struggling with this. I put it out there every morning. Because human tendency is if I'm struggling with something, I hide it. I keep it in. That's like we tend to do that. I don't want other people to know about the things I'm struggling with. And on a team, you shouldn't feel that way, right? So if we're a team, we all have the same goal. Maybe someone can help. So we try to make even the things we're struggling with really visible. Because it turns out, and these guys have heard me say it a bunch, right, that um, whenever anyone comes to me and says, hey, I have this problem, I'm going to solve it. My answer is always exactly the same. And I don't care what the problem is. The way you solve it is you make it as visible as possible. And again, human tendency is when I have a problem, I tend to hide it. But I try to flip that around. For any problem you have, figure out a way to make it super visible. And it'll get solved. People will want to help you. People will want to help you solve that problem. And also by making it visible, you might see things that you didn't see before as to how to solve it. So yeah, that's why we have the work boards to keep the work visible. There's a lot of other things I do with my team. The retrospectives are there so that you get together and talk about the things that are going well or not going well so you can figure out how to change, right? We're doing that constantly. So it's about feedback, it's about small chunks, it's about making things visible. So what I want to do now is I want to put up, and I apologize, there's so many people in the room. I'm going to put some up on the screen here. Um, you might have to gather around. I know that someone slapped out some of this, some of this, I think the principles. We're going to look at two things. We're going to look at something called the modern or, uh, modern Agile, and then we're going to look at this thing called the Agile uh, principles. The principles, you're probably not going to be able to read from back there. So if you've got a phone, you're more than welcome to pull that out and pull up the principles. This is where you have approval right now to use yeah. your phone when he gets that second piece of the principles. Yeah. I put it in the news voice so go on Slack, news voice in. Uh, there's a picture of, I posted two things. One's a website, kind of going more in detail on principles. There's a picture that's actually in Slack that is the 12, that are the 12 principles. Yeah, how often do you get someone saying, yes, please, take out your phone and check this out. But before you get to the principles, I want to show you this modern Agile framework. So like I said before, Agile is a mindset. It's a philosophy or a state of mind. It's not like something you do. And the modern Agile, so a lot of times if you go learn Agile, they'll pull out this thing that was created by about 20 years ago called the Agile Manifesto. And the Agile Manifesto sounds very serious, right? And it was created by a bunch of software developers and project managers, and it's all about writing software. And the word software appears in it like three times. And it's really heavy and context and hard to understand. And that's how a lot of people try to teach Agile. I don't like to use it because it's really difficult to actually get what they're saying. So instead, I like to use this. Someone came up and created this new Agile definition called Modern Agile. And I think this really nails it even better. So let's go through the four things of Modern Agile. So the first one is make people awesome. I love that. What does that say to you guys, make people awesome? Yes? Yeah. Like encourage each other. Yeah. Yeah, encourage each other. Help, help each other on the team be awesome. Who else do we make awesome? Yeah, ourselves, right? Like that's why it's one of the reasons we're here doing this. Do we want to make ourselves more awesome? Um, I personally, have, you know, grew up being totally not awesome, and so over, like, I'm constantly trying to figure out ways, like, how can I make myself more awesome? Okay. Who else in the work that you guys are doing might you be making more awesome? Yeah. Your your customer or who you're like delivering to? Yeah, like the people the people that are going to use whatever it is we're making, the customer we're delivering it to, like. It'd be, like, why are we doing this, this if we're not making their life better or something, right? Like, so we're trying to make them awesome. So yeah, I love how it, it's just this, whenever you're thinking about like, what are some things we could do better? I like to ask myself, well, what could I do that could make everyone more awesome? Is there anything I could do? Because people are important. Everyone is. Everyone's, you know, everyone, every human being has value and should be felt, made to feel awesome. It's just the way it is. So when we're on a team, a lot of times, I know when it gets stressful, it's easy to think like cutting people down. And like instead, let's think about how can we just make help make each other more awesome. Right? That should be the mindset going into teams. 
even if we're frustrated, and even if we're stressed, it's how can we make it better? Not how can I get my, you know, take my frustrations out on someone, right? So mindset number one, make people awesome. I love that. Any other comments or questions about make people awesome? Can I interject real quick? Yeah. He hasn't gotten to the point where you need your phone, so if you would just flip them over, because this is equally as important as that. I made the number one teaching mistake of yeah. giving instructions prior to being ready for it. So That's okay. Pull off until he gets to the next thing. So the next one is deliver value continuously. What does that, that, that mean? Yeah. I don't know. I think it means like you want to always be making sure you're like, one, that you're putting your best effort forward and putting value into everything you're doing, and two, like spending time on time on things that matter instead of getting distracted by little things that might not like your project or that aren't the benefit you or your team. Yeah, so there's a, there's a little bit of stuff to unpack in here, right? There's actually three words and they're all important. So value is what you're talking about, right? Like, is what we're working on valuable? In a lot of the agile, um, in a lot of the agile methodologies, we're constantly thinking about how do I work on the thing that is the most valuable right now for my project? To your point, if some other shiny thing comes up over here, how do I ignore that for right now and not be distracted by it? Now maybe I'll write it down and put it on my list, but it's not what I need to be working on right now, right? So the value part, what is the deliver value part? What you, when you add that deliver word, what does that mean? It's your customer. Yeah, it's your customer. So how can we actually give our customers something that's valuable to them, right? And then we add that third word, continuously. What does that mean? Yeah. Consistent reevaluation. Just like make sure that what you're doing at each point is doing the value part. Yeah, in fact, what I challenge my teams to do, like so again, I work with a lot of software teams and their old mindset was, all right, I'm building this thing, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up this big, big thing and at the end I'm gonna deliver it. And that's fine, but it would be even better if as you're building this thing, if there's little pieces that you could give to the user or give to the customer that gives them value, be giving it to them as you're going. You don't have to wait till the end. So you're continuously delivering value to them, right? Don't wait till the end if you don't have to. How can we give value out to the people that we're doing this for the whole, way, the whole time we're working on this? And that's something I would challenge you guys to think about, right? Like how can I, with the team, with the project, with the sponsors, or the people you're working with, how can I be giving them value like, throughout the whole project? And that's a mindset shift. That can be hard to do, but I would challenge you to think about that. All right. Make safety a prerequisite. This one is sort of weird. I had a friend of mine and I who were talking about this, and she just thought this was a really weird one, to make safety a prerequisite. Because she was thinking like hard hats, steel-toed boots, that's not what they're talking about here. What do you suppose they mean when they say make safety a prerequisite? Yeah. I feel like make people feel safe when you're team and like communicate with them and like Yeah, that's really important. Did everyone hear that? Like working in an environment where we feel safe to share what we're thinking. Because it turns out sometimes like the best ideas come from like some really what we think at the time is a strange idea. And if that person had just not shared it, we might never know. So what we want to do is have a have an environment where like we feel like I can say anything I need to, or anything I'm thinking, and I'm not gonna be laughed at or made fun of or told that that's a stupid idea, right? Like I need to feel safe to say the things I'm thinking. Any other kind of safety things that, you, that, that kind of brings to mind? Any ideas for other safety? So one of my favorites is, and it kind of comes to this next one where we say experiment more rapidly, not only just saying what we're thinking, right, because that, that's important, but also like I need to feel like it's okay for me to try something even if it may not work. In fact, especially if it may not work. Like I need to feel safe to experiment and try new things. I need to be working in a way that we can figure that out. And so one of the ways you do that, again, we talked about breaking things into small chunks, so like if we're going to try something new that we don't know if it's going to work or not, it might just completely fail. So how do we make that experiment small? And then if it does fail, like it's not catastrophic. It's no big deal. And we learn from it. Right? And so if we, if we think about work that way. Like, okay, how do, we, how do we make it so the work we're doing, that even if it doesn't work, it's not a huge deal. We're not going to lose a lot of time. We're not going to maybe lose money. We're not going to break anything that can be fixed. 
So that's a safety thing. Feeling safe to try things and failing. I will let you guys know that I fail on an almost daily basis because I try so many things that are crazy. And I fail all the time, but I learn from them. And some of those experiments, though, where I failed have turned into some really cool things. So feel safe to fail. And encourage each other to fail. And try, as long as you're trying things. All right, finally, experiment and learn rapidly. So let's talk about that, experimenting and learning. So learning is tied, in my opinion, especially in a school like this, your learning is not just someone talking at you or teaching at you is how I like to describe it. It's you guys are learning on your own, right? How do you do that? How are you learning things? And the projects you're doing, how are you learning? More research. Yeah. I do the tasks we have and the our partners discussing with them, talking with them. Yeah. Doing the things they assign. Yeah. It's interesting. Are, do you, if you do something that you've done a hundred times before, do you typically learn anything from that? No, not usually. Now, if you do something you've never done before, do you typically learn something from that? Yeah. And that's experimenting, right? So experimentation is doing something you've never done before. Doing something where you don't know what the answer is going to be. And that's how we learn, right? Like that's human beings, like that's the only way we learn is by doing something that we haven't done before. And no matter how it goes, you're going to learn something, you know? And so then we got, it says experiment and learn rapidly. So that rapidly thing, how, do you, how can we do that? How can we experiment and learn rapidly? Any ideas around that? Yeah. Like continue to push yourself and like step outside your comfort zone and try new stuff. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Stretching? Okay, no problem. Anyone else? Rapidly? How do we how do we speed this up? How do we speed up that learning? Small chunks again, right? Yeah, small chunks. Is that? Oh, go for it. <laughs> Sorry, I need to step back. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually interesting. There's a guy named Jez Humble who's a big Agile teacher. He's a software developer. And one of the things he says is if it's harder, or if it's hard for us, we need to do it more, not less. Because again, human tendency is when something is difficult for us, we tend to avoid it. It's just the way it is. Like, it's hard. I don't want to do that. I'm not good at that. It makes me feel stupid. It makes me feel like I don't know what I'm doing. I don't like that. But his, his philosophy is we need to do it more, not less. And I call that the personal trainer philosophy. Has anyone ever worked out at a gym with a personal trainer? A couple. I'm the only one. A couple. What is the dumbest thing you can do, per se, when you're working with a personal trainer? What's that? I can't do that. Or, ow, that hurts. Because what's going to happen if you say that? <laughs> yeah, you just discovered what you're going to be doing for the next three hours, right? Yeah, so why, but why do we do that? Like, why does a personal trainer, is it because they're mean and they hate you? No, why do they do that? Why do they have that? Yeah. They're trying to make you better. Yeah, they're trying to make you better. If something hurts, that means you have a weakness there. And all they want to do is make it stronger. And it's the same thing, and I love what you said here, right? Like, we challenge ourselves and push ourselves to do things that normally we might not want to or we might not feel comfortable doing. It's only going to make us stronger. It's only going to make us smarter, and we're going to learn from it. So I love that. That is absolutely the mentality. And when you're on your teams, I challenge you to, like, take the, when you're looking at those tasks, don't just take the ones where you're like, oh, yeah, I'm really good at that. I'll take this one. Talk with each other and be like, hey, I know that you're really good at this, but I'm not. Can we work on this together? Because right? I want to learn that. I don't know how to do that. Or just, hey, I want to try this. You know what? I've never done it before, but I think I can do it. I want to try it. I challenge you to do that. That's how you're going to learn. The rest of your life, I would challenge you to do that. Right? Like, that is how you learn. It's absolutely not Push yourselves all the time. So that's the modern agile. So this is it, like this is the mindset. So whenever you're struggling on your teams, and you're like, oh, this isn't working, what can we do? Like go back to this. Say, how can we make people more awesome? How can we make this more safe? 
How can we maybe experiment faster? How can we deliver value? Like, I would go back to this and as a team talk about this. How do we do this better? Does that make sense to everybody? Does this like resonate with people? Because I, I love this. Right? Like, this is how I try to live my life now. And I've never been able to not make a situation better by going to this. So the next thing we'll talk about too is that, and this is where you get your phones out, 12 principles, because again, it's really small. Um, if you don't have a phone, feel free to come on up here, because what I want you to do is I want you to take, I'm going to give you like two or three minutes, and I want you to read through these, and then we'll talk about like, are there any of these that like really resonate with you? Like, as you were reading through these, are there any that kind of jumped out at you or resonate with you? So I'm going to shut up now and let you, let you read. I'm going to give you two minutes to do that. Up. I should have printed these off, but even if I had, I would have no idea that there would be so many of these. So. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. So in here, you'll see the word software. Again, this was written by those same people. So wherever you see the word software, just in your head, replace that with whatever it is the project that you're working on, whatever it is you're making. Number five jumps out at people a lot. I hear that one a lot. Number five is build projects are unmotivated.